and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. We are going to do another video on concrete deflections. So in this video, we're going to be finding the maximum immediate crack deflection for a beam, a concrete member. And uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about some theory uh, because theory in this uh, section is really important. Understanding why we need to uh, evaluate cracked sections is, is an important part of being a structural designer and having a good grasp of kind of what it is that you're doing and what materials that you're working with and what their constraints are. So uh, before we begin, let's take a look at the question and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So we have a beam here with some service loads. We have a beam section. We're asked to estimate the maximum immediate deflection for this beam. Uh, due to the total service load, which is going to be the, these two loads here, using the CSA uh, approximate procedure. Okay, So the prox approximate procedure um, in the Canadian code allows us to um, estimate uh, concrete deflections using elastic deflection formulas, as long as we consider the effective moment of inertia, and uh, as well a varying K, depending on the, the end conditions. So... If you go to the back of your structural, you know, your mechanics book or anything like that, you'll see we have a formula uh, for a simply supported beam for deflection. That formula is uh, simply 5 over 384 times W to L to the fourth over EI. Now, this is a simply supported beam with span L. So this is a maximum elastic deflection of our simply supported beam. If we solve for the maximum bending moment for a simply supported beam with a uni uniformly distributed load, we know it's WL squared, squared over 8. Now solving for W, okay, we're going to end up with 8M over L squared. Now if we plug that back into our formula, what we get is K, and I just added this K, we get 5 over 48 ML squared over E C I E. Now I added this I E and I added the K. What this I E is, if you go back to the previous video, um, if you haven't watched that, I suggest you do because we do explain what this is. This is the effective moment of inertia. The effective moment of inertia means that we've taken into account the cracking in the beam and we've lowered the moment of inertia according to that cracking, okay, because as our concrete member cracks, it becomes less stiff. Now, this is an approximate procedure. Um, for a more accurate, non-linear, kind of iterative process, it's better to use computer software to do this type of uh, analysis. The code also permits that we use this method as well. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and let's get started. So, as we remember, we have, uh, of our section, we have our gross moment of inertia, right? That's just simply the the beam's cross-sectional property uh, moment of inertia without any cracking, okay? We have our cracked moment of inertia, which is when the beam is fully cracked so that we're not really taking into account any concrete strength. In tension, we're using just the steel, okay, and the compression concrete. And for the effective moment of inertia, that lies somewhere in between these two. And it depends on what our bending moment is. So if our bending moment is very small, compared to uh, the size of our section, for example, our section is not going to crack. In that case, we're just going to use IG. If our section is small and our bending moment is large, maybe uh, IE will be less than ICR, in which case we're just going to take ICR. And if it's somewhere in between, then we're going to use IE in our calculations. So we go over all that in the previous video. So um, first, I'm going to write some formulas down. So what we're going to need to find here is we're going to need to find our gross moment of inertia which is BH cubed over 12, okay? We need to find our cracked moment of inertia. The formula for this, and uh, we can get into the derivation for this in another video. If we do it now, it'll be too long, but if you want, just uh, let me know down below. Okay, we have our effective moment of inertia, which is a combination of what I just wrote down there. So we have I cracking plus IG minus I cracking times our cracking moment over our maximum moment to the power of three. So this is the formula that we want to get. So in order to do that, we need IG and we need ICR. So let's go ahead and we'll start with those. So first we'll start with IG. Uh, we have our beams cross section here. So we have 400 as our base times 500 cubed, which is our height divided by 12 and rounding. That's going to give us 4.2 times 10 to the nine millimeters to the fourth. Perfect. Okay, um, next let's find our moment of, so we found our gross moment of inertia. Now let's find our crack moment of inertia. 
Let's find n first, okay? Because that's an easy one. So n is our modular ratio. When we're calculating our cracked section, we're going to consider the effect of the concrete as it contributes to our um, our moment of inertia. The reason being is that we consider the section fully cracked, and as a result, we're going to be fully utilizing this this tension steel here. So we want to convert the tension steel into an equivalent amount of concrete. So we have a uniform material we can calculate. So then once we have the whole thing in concrete, we can calculate the moment of inertia of the section. So um, the modular ratio is simply the modulus elasticity of the steel over the concrete. Okay, so we're converting the steel to an equivalent amount of concrete. So I'm just going to put ICR here. Okay, so we're going to find N first. Okay, so N is going to be ES over EC. Okay, and ES we know is 200,000 MPa. That's given. Um, in any textbook or you know in your code that should be given for EC okay EC we can approximate using this formula 4500 uh, root F prime C we have F prime C is 25 so just go ahead and calculate that that's 22,500 MPa and that's going to give us a value of 8.89 which I will round to 9 for the purpose of this question okay so we have our n okay we have our ig so far uh, what else do we need well um, we need our area of steel. That one's pretty straightforward. We have four 20Ms. A 20M is 300 millimeters squared, so we have 1,200 millimeters squared of steel in our beam for our flexural steel. We need to find our rho. So the formula for Y bar, if you do kind of want to see some of the derivations of these, we can show them in another video. So how we arrive at Y bar for the crack section, how we arrive at N area of steel, this term here, they all mean something. So these are important to know, but we're solving the question now. If you want to see it later, let us know in the comments down below. Okay, so next we have, first we have our area of steel that we just found. Next we're going to find our rho, but let's look at what y bar is, okay? So that we know what we're doing here. So our y bar for our cracked section, okay, is simply going to be np squared plus 2np, sorry. This goes outside of the do another bracket here, minus NP. Okay, so we have our D, our effective depth is given, it's 430, okay. Okay, and let's find MP. So over here, NP, okay. Well, we need, we have N, let's find rho. So we know that rho is simply AS over BD, okay. We have AS, okay, 1200, we have B, 400, we have D, 430. Plug those in, you're going to get that rho is simply 0 0.007. Okay, so we have a reinforcement ratio of 0.7%. And NP, if we multiply N, which is 9, times P, rho, we're going to get uh, 0 0.063. So go ahead, plug this in, okay, and we're going to get a Y bar value of 128 millimeters. Okay, cool. So we found our Y bar. Um, what else do we need to find in this formula? It looks like we have everything that we need, so we can compute our cracking mo uh, moment of inertia. So let's plug in. We have B, which is 400, okay, times Y bar. It's cubed, which is 128, plus our N times AS. N is 9. AS is 1,200 times the effective depth, okay, which is 430 minus Y bar, 128 squared. And we're going to arrive at a value for our cracked moment of inertia of 1.3 times 10 to the 9 millimeters to the 4th. Okay. So as you can see, when the section is fully cracked, look how far we've reduced our moment of inertia from when it wasn't cracked at all. So this is why we need to consider cracking when we calculate um, anything to do with concrete. Okay. So we have a huge reduction in our flexure or in our stiffness and our ability to resist shear and flexure, okay? It's going to cause excessive deflections. It's going to require more steel. Uh, the section is going to lose capacity. So these are all important things to consider. Now, let's go ahead and calculate our cracking moment, okay? So let's end that part there. That was our ICR. Uh, our MCR is a, um, a function of the beam properties, the beam cross-sectional properties. Essentially what it is is after this moment, uh, occurs on the beam at any point, the beam will experience some cracking. So 
let's go ahead and show the formula. So this is simply fr ig over yt. fr is a modulus of rupture, and this is 0.6 lambda f prime c. Okay, uh, we have lambda as one. Okay. F prime C is 25, that's gonna give us a value of three MPA. Okay, our IG, we have it from up here, it's the same. And our YT, because we have a rectangular section, this is simply just gonna be half of the beam depth. So, right. and our cracking moment is then just going to be three times 4.2 times 10 to the nine over 250, okay? And if we divide by 10 to the six, we're gonna get 50 kilonewton meter. Okay, so that is the point at which our beam will crack. Now we need to find our moment, our maximum bending moment. Now, this is important. It's asking for the total service, uh, the deflection due to total service loads. So we're going to want MDL plus MLL. If we want to just live load, it's a different procedure that uh, we can go over in another video if you want. So this is simply just going to be, uh, as we know, we have WL squared over 8. Okay, we have a simply supported beam. So that's just going to be 26 times six squared over eight. Okay, so our bending moment is 117 kilonewton meter. All right, now let's go ahead and calculate our effective moment of inertia. Okay, so we're gonna use this formula up here. Okay, so we have our I cracked. I cracked is 1.3 times 10 to the nine plus gross moment of inertia minus cracked. And we're going to multiply that by MCR, okay, so MCR we found to be 50. These units will cancel. Make sure you use the same units. And that whole term is cubed. Now what we get for our moment of effective moment of inertia is 1.53 times 10 to the nine millimeters to the fourth. Okay? And as you can see, uh, as our uh, cracking moment increases, this term gets much larger. So as the capacity of our beam uh, increases to resist cracking, our effective moment of inertia drastically increases because this term is to the power of three. So as we can see, this is higher than our, our eye cracking. So our eye cracking, okay, this, our eye effective is greater than our eye cracking, but less than our eye gross. So we're going to use eye effective. Now, this is very close to eye cracking. Maybe to be conservative, you would just want to use this. You would get a higher deflection, but it would be safer. So something to keep in mind, that would be up to you as a designer. Finally, the last thing that we have to do is find our immediate total crack deflection. Okay, and that is simply just gonna be the, our, our formula that we went over before. Okay, so it's the elastic deflection formula for a simply supported beam, but we're going to use, okay, I effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in. K is one for a simply supported beam. Our maximum bending moment due to service loads of the total loading is, uh, as we calculated before, 117. Let's turn everything to Newton and millimeters. Uh, L is 6,000. Uh, our modulus elasticity of concrete is 22,500. And our effective moment of inertia is 1.53 times 10 to the 9. What we're going to arrive at is a value, if we calculate that, of 13 millimeters. And that is our instantaneous deflection due to service loads um, using the approximate Canadian procedure. Now you could compare this, you know, to um, the deflection limits in the code. Um, an important concept as well as long-term deflection, which we didn't cover in this video. Um, it, we can do another video on that. Actually, that's an important topic. This is just instantaneous, right? We have creep, we have other types of... Um, uh, loading sequences that can cause long-term deflections as well. Um, but that's for another video. So hope you learned something here. A um, little bit of a longer video, but you know this is a really important topic uh, for a structural designer who works with reinforced concrete. So it's important to understand it and uh, to to understand you know why the code says we need to use it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.